Okay, let's try this. Uh, I don't like OBS if I'm honest. It's really different. Okay, let's see if I am live. Um, okay. I like to think so. Um, okay, let's just check this. Uh, watch video. Okay, three is the URL. OBS is weird. I don't know if you people can hear me or what. Um, okay, cool. Actually, yeah, I can see myself now. Perfect. There's a bit of delay, but yeah, it's working. Okay, cool. You guys can hear me. It's all working. If so, then I can safely post this out. I'm not lagging or anything like that. Um, my volume's good. Cool. Alright. I'll just tweet this out and give people some time to get on, basically. Um, I haven't started just yet, no. Uh, um, so, yeah, um, you guys can all hear me. Um, I hope. <laughs> Hopefully I'm not lagging or anything like that. We'll just give people a few minutes to get started. If anyone's got any questions, you've been dying to ask me. Um, I haven't streamed for a while. Been really busy, etc. Um, but yeah, if, well, I'll just wait for some people to get on. If you've got any questions, you want to ask me anything, just let me know. Available man. <laughs> um, this shit will be working. Yeah, let's just make sure I can hear myself. Okay. Never used OBS. I mean, every time I went to use it, I kept having issues. Um, so, yeah, cool. Works. Um, Joe, how to get your book. <laughs> Funny you mentioned that. Um, I think I actually have a copy here somewhere. Yeah, I do. Um, yeah, so this is my book. Um, a lot of people have been asking me, how do I get a hold of this? Um, so as you know, I held, I held that event in Cambridge um, for like training people and that. And my book really went with the training that we did on the day and things like that. Um, I've actually got to catch up with them in four days to see how they're getting on. Um, I am going to be releasing my methodology guidebook and that. Um, but I feel like if, I don't know, just, yeah, just watch this space. <laughs> Um, and yeah, I got a hacker hoodie on. Well, it's my bug bounty notes. Um, it says Z Shawano on the back. Um, I will get, uh, yeah, just watch the space. I mean, I got a lot of things in the works with what I want to do. I mean, with bug bounty notes as well. Um, it's grew quite quickly, and considering I run it by myself single handedly, um, it can be very time consuming to make the content and train people and mentor and actually spend time hacking. I think that's why I burnt myself out recently, really. Um, but yeah, I mean, if everyone's happy, everyone's here, um, we can get streaming if we want. Um, <laughs> Luke's got a signed copy. <laughs> Alright, guys, so <coughs> we'll get started. People, I mean, it's going to be on It's gonna be on YouTube forever, isn't it? Um, do you know, I haven't even done, I haven't done this for so long. I forgot how to do this. Present, there we go. Okay, cool. Uh, anyone has any questions throughout, you get confused. You know how this system works. I'll answer any question you ask me. Um, yeah, so. So basically, let's be a dork and read JavaScript files. So, um, depending on how experienced you are at hacking, this is kind of aimed at people that are new um, and what actually is dorking and why reading JavaScript files is so important and how you can find so many interesting bugs and bugs that are in your face and don't require you to run like crazy ass tools and find subdomains and do all of this um so i'm gonna give you the rundown of that um as to how the process for that works for me really um 
So yeah, let's get started. Um, I probably should have added things to this slide, really. Do you know what I mean? So it doesn't show them all at the same time. <laughs> but it's fine, whatever. Okay, so what exactly is Dorkin? So as it says there, using a public search engine such as Google, GitHub, Yahoo, Bing and all that to just find public data about your target. Now they spy to the entire internet, don't they? Um, do you know what I mean? Shodan is checking IP addresses, Googling is spidering um, all of um, websites and endpoints and things like that. Yahoo and Bing just probably steal Google's data. <laughs> and you know what GitHub is, it's a place for developers to basically push their code to repos, to share and work with each other and discuss issues, merge requests and yeah. So you can find so much about your target from Dorkin. So the example I've got here is site example.com in URL um, and then you've got the and sign. This will find parameters on the target that you're looking at. So you can't look for question marks, which is where what a parameter is attached to, or with the hashtag, um, hash fragment, sorry. Um, but with the and sign, um, that does get indexed and does get scraped. So that can help you find lots and lots of parameters. Now, this can help you find parameters, which you should use on every single endpoint you find, because as I've always said, developers reuse code throughout, um, use the same libraries and things like that. So just because you find a parameter on, let's say, login, it might work elsewhere, like on sign up or register and things like that. Um, so consider that. Um, get the mic close to your mouth, sorry. Is that better? So the second example is finding extensions that are actually on this target. Um, so you're looking for like PHP, JSP, ASP, XML, text. You know what I mean, they might have uploaded test.txt, which might contain some information. Quite rare, but you never know. Um, and it can give you an insight as to what this target is actually about. Um, I mean, if it's about, I mean, no offense to PHP developers, I'm a PHP developer myself, but typically you're going to find lots of XSS, potentially some SQL injection um, and things like that. Um, so by dorking for that, you can not only find endpoints and interesting files and parameters, um, but you can f get an insight as to, okay, well, what is this company running? What's running the back end? What, what, what sort of technology has their server got, etc. And the last example um, is simply searching for the keywords. Um, so, do you know what I mean? Admin, login, register, sign up, um, and also certain parameters like return URL. That literally is where you just get creative and there's no real uh, i mean you could probably run common word list from set lists on google with that um but really that the last step is once you've understood your target and what they're actually about that's where you can start searching for certain keywords um do you know what i mean if they've uh, f f one example is something that's relatively new is i've always said it is the gdpr stuff um with managing your cookies and all this and that um it's new code have a little look around that sort of functionality um you simply dork for that stuff um and on shodan well shodan's pretty relatively simple and easy because they give you publicly the search queries that you can use so if you're looking for like you want to find an organization you can search org uh, colon and then i mean i feel like people know a lot about shodan that's why i didn't post too much about it because you know what I mean you're just simply looking find the IP net range as to what this company own depending on what is in scope of course and simply start seeing what Shodan knows about their IPs etc um, so has anyone got any questions about that I feel like Dorkin on Google is really you ask questions and you get results um, I don't feel like there's any special source to Dorkin um, I can spend hours dorking, going through loads of different things because, well, I mean, Google has spied the entire internet and yeah, and same with GitHub, there's lots of repos and interesting things out there. Um, so I got a question from uh, Jaswal, when everyone is also going through recon like Sublist and Dirt Search, how to be ahead of them all? Um, so that's, I mean, uh, that kind of, um, I was going to say it's kind of in my book, but obviously you guys... I um, released it, um, but that's kind of where I've come up. You come up with your own methodology. Um, Franz Rosen's message mes uh, mentioned it. Sorry, in one of his slides of being MVH or something. Um, I'll share it out if I can find it again. 
And he was go for the hard things that everyone else is not going for. Go for the features and things that people aren't going for. Like everyone is running subdomain scanners and trying to find files and directories. But once you actually dig deep into a website and understand how it's working and look into JavaScript files, which I will explain in a little bit, find out what Google knows about. And yeah, you can end up finding old files and things like that. Same in Wayback Machine. Like you don't need to run any tools because Google has done the work for you by spidering. <laughs> Um, I'll give the slides out after this. Um, yeah, no worries. Um, so yeah, that's that's my opinion as well. Um, so what type of bugs can be found? So privilege escalation. Um, I'm gonna get to the JavaScript thing very soon. Don't worry. So just carrying on with the Google Dorkin stuff. So one thing that a lot of people miss is if you go to the end page of whatever you've dorked for. So there's an example of mail.ru repeat the search with the omitted results included because it will show you so many more endpoints and interesting things. Uh, do you know what I mean? Google wants to show you relevant results. It's not going to show you duplicates or things that are similar. So it will just hide it. But you as a hacker, you want to find as much as possible. So when you're dorking, just go straight to the last page and repeat the search with omitted results. Um, and yeah, like I say, it will just show you lots more. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, like Patrick said, don't use sublister and dirt search if everyone's using it. Um, do you know what I mean? Don't f use the information that me, Ben, and all these other hackers tell you about tools and things to look for. But you've always got to, as a hacker, add your own twist to it and your own little... Do you know what I mean? That's, well, I guess that's what being a hacker is. You're naturally interested in wanting to learn how something works. Um, all these guides and things like that uh, just to kind of help you get in the right direction and start the search, basically. <laughs> um, so yeah carrying on so what about on github so like i say github developers can push their code um, share it with teams and other people um so that's where they make the mistake by pushing test code or things that have been pushed which they shouldn't have been and things like that and again it's as simple as asking the right questions so in always put it in um, quote marks as well so uh, github and google for example will focus on that so you're just looking for the company and you're looking for certain keywords stage staging dev prod qa swagger like is there any test code that's been pushed um and a lot of the times you'll find domains which don't like they either don't respond or is 404 which in that case you'd start running um, a directory brute force or file um, directory and things like that to see what's on there um, but if you can't reach the subdomain just give it a little ping run nmap see if it's actually live and if it is then just save it for future server side request for you potentially um, you never know um, so API keys, this is something a lot of people ask me, they're always like, oh my god, Sean, I found an API key on GitHub or whatever, I need to know what it does. This is where you just need to follow the logic as to what is with this code, because you know I mean? GitHub is about pushing code, so they've pushed code with this key. So try and just backtrace what this code is actually doing. Um, is it used on a certain endpoint? Um, if it generally is just an API key and there's nothing with it, then just start searching on Google. Go back to there and start searching for what that header is called. So like I've used an example there, x-api-key. Um, start searching for that with the company name. Um, and do you know what I mean? It might show more information as to what this is used for. Um, if you've seen one of my other streams, I give an example as to this. Um, I found a way to leak a token on a very well-known company, but I had no idea what this token did. Like, it wasn't set in a cookie, it wasn't It wasn't used anywhere, it was just a token, and I was like, okay, but it looks interesting. Um, and from Googling around and finding, like, I Googled certain parts of the key and things like that, and it led to more information, API docs, and yeah, I found the bug. Um, I've also given an example there where I had a case where the login flow um, used a client ID. Um, so imagine this scenario, I'm visiting a website, example.com, and when I'm registering and logging in, they're using some sort of OAuth, um, custom OAuth setup with an app, and there was a client ID, a redirect, um, and response type and things like that, the basic. Um, I couldn't get any redirects, anything like that. Um, but when searching on GitHub, I found a test little thing uh, with a different client ID. Now, simply from sending, replacing the current uh, client ID with this one that I found 
at first, I didn't see absolutely anything possible. I was just like, okay, it's just logged me in as normal. But from further poking, um, I could actually bypass two-factor authentication. Um, so that's where, again, you dig deep with hacking and try different scenarios um, and, I mean, with and without two-factor authentication and things like that. Um, so, and lastly, company and then certain keywords. So, do you want to find certain things that they look for? Log in and sign up. Um, you're also looking for certain keywords like admin, administrator, password. Um, I've put on their app spot. Um, I recently found a critical bug where a company had exposed a swagger on app spot. Um, I simply looked for their company name, app spot, and yeah, there it was, unauthed, and I could do some interesting stuff. Um, you're literally looking for this, do you know what I mean, this company to see if they've pushed any information about themselves as a developer um, and Gwendal I did retweet recently as well published a ton of awesome github tools to actually help you automate all of this basically and get alerted as and when they push it live so yeah definitely check that tweet out I can retweet it or post it in the chat if you will want real quickly um, yeah here it is so yeah like I say he's got a bunch of great tools there which I highly recommend testing out um i can spend absolutely hours dorking on github i mean there's so much out there you literally have no idea where you can end up sometimes <laughs> um so has anyone got any questions about github dorking before we move on to reading javascript files which i know probably a lot of you are here for because <laughs> i feel like dorking and asking google and github for quite certain information is relatively straightforward pardon me um, but is anyone relatively confused or not quite sure anything about that? Um, I'm not quite sure how delayed my stream is to the chat, and I don't want to just sit here awkwardly in silence. <laughs> but that, um, I do have a question from MD. What are the possibilities for looking into JavaScript file? How to find XSS just looking into JavaScript? Um, yeah, I'll get to that very soon as to what you're looking for in JavaScript files, um, and I'll give you some examples. Um, this is available recorded. All of my streams uh, end up on YouTube after recorded. I don't delete them. You can watch them whenever you want. Um, so yeah, if a company's not using GitHub, I mean, not every company uses GitHub and pushes code there, but that's where I believe I retweeted again recently where somebody posted a massive recon um, post of Medium as to all these different places where code may be pushed, like GitLab. I believe there was some Scribble postcard thing which led on to more information, something like that. Um, again, that's learning your target, isn't it? Um, the more you learn about a target and this is why I always recommend don't jump from program to program and stick to the same. In my case, I like wide scope programs because you can really learn as to what they're doing. And I mean, if you know a company is always using GitHub, you just always keep an eye on that. Um, because, yeah, why not? <laughs> Companies don't seem to learn these days. I don't know. Um, so, yeah, everyone seems pretty up to date and cool with that. That's cool with me. So, JavaScript files, what exactly are in them? So, before I start, for those of you who don't know what JavaScript files are and why they're actually really important, so when you visit websites, they're built in these different layers. So, you've got the back end stuff where you've got the databases, PHP, I mean, the server side stuff happening. But then you've got the client side stuff where you've got the CSS, which is for, I mean, showing you the website and things being nice and Cool. Uh, and then the JavaScript is kind of what puts it together. So let's say, for example, when you click on a link, um, the developer wants to be able to track that you've clicked this link for whatever analytics purposes. Um, so that's where they'd have an on click and then run the JavaScript. So JavaScript kind of helps the website function um, and it contains so much interesting code, like certain cookie values um, and certain features get added um, and things like that. Um, I am going to give you examples as to as to what I find in JavaScript files, and I will also give you some uh, tips as to how to make the JavaScript a lot more readable, so you can understand what's going on. Um, so yeah. So like I say, JavaScript files contain the code that help the website function. Um, which is pretty much what I just explained. So this is for newbies. You can automate this completely, but for people who don't look in JavaScript files already, just simply pick your target. 
visit a web the website whatever it is right click view the source and just simply look for .js and look for what's interesting so jQuery.js is probably not going to be very interesting because that's just jQuery but things like main.js um, app.js things things like that so you find a bunch of them uh, and like I say you can automate this and there's tools out there to automate it but this is the very very basics and I I find it fun in my opinion understanding JavaScript and how the website's put together um, but again it's the same as Google and github Dorkin you're looking for certain keywords so API internal URL variable um, links location dot search is it looking for certain you can find parameters if it's looking for location dot search if hash certain hash fragments and things like that um, literally just I'm gonna give some examples as after this house show I mean it's relatively straightforward um, so what that can help you find is like I say new parameters and variables uh, references to API calls which I will give some examples um, well one example like I say is think about a functionality that link a functionality sorry that lets you upgrade so you've got okay how to explain this so you've got two tiers um, tier one and tier two um, tier one costs you five ninety nine a month and you get certain features tier two costs you ten ninety nine a month and you get access to everything now the way a website like I say is put together is this JavaScript file doesn't care what account status and tier level you are that's happening server side um, based on of course how the website is put together but typically this JavaScript file will contain the certain URLs that it's going to send a request to if you was upgraded um, so you can simply look in these JavaScript files like I mean find a feature that allows you to have different upgrades and get different features and simply get the lowest and look through the JavaScript files and see if the certain functions and endpoints which match what an upgraded like max account can do um, and then see if you can make that API call or what have you that was feels like that was a lot to take in like I said I will give you an I will run through that again. Um, that feels like it was a very tongue twister thing to say. <laughs> um, you can look for dev comments, new endpoints, subdomains, things like that, API keys. Um, again, if you find an API key you don't know what it does, um, simply look on Google, um, find API docs, wiki files, do your research, do your homework. <laughs> um, so, yeah, some examples. Like I said, I could upgrade my account to three tiers, one, two, and three, and each one give me a different perk and it each cost me different amounts. However, there was one same JavaScript file. So once you logged in, everyone had access to the same portal, but obviously if server side, if it checked that your account status was level three, it would show you more links and access to more. But the JavaScript file contained all of the requests that it made if you was upgraded. Um, and I could make those calls and yeah, I was level one, but I could make level three um, requests. Um, so the second example is I found references to internal stage and subdomains. Um, so if I visited this, it basically it basically was doing a check for if it was a local environment, and if it was, check if a cookie value existed. Um, so I matched this cookie value to a subdomain I found, set this cookie value, and yeah, the page loaded and made some API calls, and yeah, it, info leak basically. Um, that was getting creative, I guess, because John you know I and mean? I was matching cookie names with subdomains. Um, that's just, I, I haven't really spoke too much about that, but that's sometimes how you can find um, endpoints and files and even subdomains. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'll, maybe I'll do more on that at some point. Um, and my last example is the Google Dorkin. So I found no, so I always look for parameters um, using that Google Dork that I told you, but I found nothing. Literally, Google had indexed nothing. I couldn't find any parameters. Um, and like I say, JavaScript files help a website function and work. And the trend is your friend with how websites work. And you will see on every single login file, uh, login page, register page, sign up, whatever, they always have some type of redirect parameter. You just have to assume it. It it will just be there somewhere. Look, that's why I look in the JavaScript files. And like I say, I discovered r underscore URL. And yeah, there we go. I managed to get a token leak. Um, I do explain this in my book, which again, I will give access to eventually um, once I've worked everything out. Um, but 
you know what I mean? I have a bit of a developer background, um, so I understand how developers think and work, um, and I understand how teams of developers work with other teams, with sharing things, um, and like I say, the trend is your friend. So even if you do not see a redirect parameter when you're testing this website, have a look in all the JavaScript files and just search for redirect uh, return URL, and just honestly have a look. Um, and like I said, I'm going to give you some examples after this. Um, but before I move on, does anyone have any questions about what I've just explained? Oh, ah, I missed one thing at the bottom. Somebody asked me how to make the JavaScript readable. So if you just simply Google for JavaScript beautifier, um, copy and paste the JavaScript into there and beautify it, and it will literally make it completely readable, um, all on a new line. No, yeah, that makes it nice and readable. Um, if it's obvious, obfuscated um, can't say that word very well um, then simply Google for deobfuscator um, and try and you know what I mean decode it um, depending on how it's been done um, if you ever need help with that just yeah ping me basically <laughs> um, so yeah like Poon Web has just said and just then moved his removed his message that's exactly how developers think yeah it is and that's again why I feel like if you're a new hacker and you don't know how to develop one perk of sticking to the same program and learning how developers think is you can become a developer without needing to be a developer. Um, and that sounds weird to say, but like I say, developers copy and paste a lot of code. Um, look on Stack Overflow, for examples, and things like that. They use a lot of libraries. And like I say, the trend is your friend. After logging in, they don't they control where it wants to redirect. And pretty much every website does it. <laughs> Um, I will release, um, I've got a few guides and tutorials, I've been working on loads of updates on Bugbay Notes for new guides, tutorials and releasing some of my tools. Um, I'm going to yeah, be releasing that tool, um, Stevanus Evo, bear with. Um, and how much will the book cost? Um, I don't know. I don't do things for money, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> so yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, you guys pretty much get the gist of that. Um, so here's some examples. I mean, this is actually on Verizon Media. I did this literally just before I came on. So if you visit football.fantasysports.yahoo.com, you can see um, I simply searched for .js, and the first cmp.js leaks some dev and production um, URLs there. Whether that's intentional, whether that anything can be done with that, I don't think so, for my opinion. I believe I found see that a long time ago. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> the second example is where the cookie was. So you could see cookies.get loyalty member. So again, when you're looking in JavaScript files, look for cookies. That's one keyword you should be searching for. Um, and then the last example is, again, where I've simply searched for redirect underscore URL. And you can see there, it's got the word params.redirect. And like I say, it redirected. Um, couldn't find any, oh, and it only redirected on register, as you can see there. There was register, and yeah. So like I say, so you literally just searching for keywords. That's all dorking and hunting through JavaScript files is. Um, you sh it, the information is in front of you. It's just asking the right questions, looking and spending the time to understand what does this JavaScript file do. Um, like I said, I've mentioned before, um, my, I had good success on TripAdvisor because I realized every single endpoint and feature on their website had a JavaScript file to go with that. So you look in the JavaScript file, and all of the code was about this feature in front of you and this endpoint. So easy peasy, you can just understand what's going on. There's not a mess. Um, on websites like Verizon Media um, and things like that, um, there's a lot happening on the websites. Um, they're in calling a lot of JavaScript files and things like that. That's again where spending time and learning how things work will pay off. Um, look at Doggy G. Didn't to become a millionaire and naffy from targeting Verizon Media, basically. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so Bala, so you put your domain is Yahoo and you took JavaScript file from OAuth. So, yeah, if you look at Yahoo, um, you'll know they're owned by OAuth um, and it's in scope um, and that they own it. And like I say, it, 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 do you know what I mean, even if the domains that the, of the JavaScript files that you're looking at aren't the same as, let's say, you know I mean, you're on Yahoo.com and it's not Yahoo.com. That doesn't matter. A lot of websites will host their JavaScript files on different domains completely. So like, do you know what I mean? It's usually like 
something static or whatever. Um, those drives, they still, you're not attacking that domain, but you're looking at the JavaScript files, which helps create code and features and functions for this website that you are in scope with. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, I feel like, yeah, I feel like I don't need to, <laughs> I feel like that does make sense to me. Um, can you tell us something about JS Parser? Um, so what do you want to know about JS Parser? <laughs> That's by Ben. I, if in my opinion, I don't use, um, JS Parser. Um, I'm now checking it out. Um, so let's have a look. So it's for easily discovering AJS requests when we're uh, performing security research. Um, I'll try it and see how it is and let you know. <laughs> um, so I, your keyword lists, um, if you're a beginner, then do you know what I mean? You've got set lists, but in my opinion and what I highly recommend is, again, when you're st sticking to the same program, is to generate your own word lists. Look for certain keywords and common things that they're using, cookie names, files, etc., etc. Et um, because you build your own word list, that's how you stay ahead of the competition. Um, that's to answer someone else's question. Uh, do you know what I mean? If everyone's new to hacking and everyone's saying, hey, use sec lists and everyone's running these same word lists, which majority of people are, hence why a lot of people get dupes and things like that. Um, so an example of a custom word list. Um, okay, so do you know what I mean? Re visit their robots.txt file, see what's in there. Um, look at common JavaScript file names, um, function names, cookie names. You, you, do you know what I mean? Have they renamed it from Laravel session to something custom? Um, what else have they renamed which comes custom built in? Things like that. It's about, I feel like it's a hard one to answer because there's lots of different, a lot, every target is different, isn't it? Um, I really wish I could tell people the targets I focus on and things like that. It would help, but... <laughs> Um, so yeah, I kind of, I feel like I've gone so through this quick because I'm pretty much done. <laughs> That's, but that honestly, honestly, I feel like a lot of people feel like, oh my God, this is secret source. This is, I, I, I feel like this is as simple as it gets, if I'm honest. You are literally, so again, somebody's just asked me how to find interesting JavaScript endpoints. So again, when you're looking at your target, when you are searching through the JavaScript files, you're looking for interesting keywords. Um, do you know what I mean? Look at look at the look on GitHub. What you're looking for: staging, dev, prod, QA, swagger, API secret. You're doing the exact same in JavaScript files. You are looking for just keywords. This is information that is static and is right in front of you. There's the JavaScript files which are referenced on um, HTML files and endpoints and things like that. That goes with that code. You want to see what it does and how it's put the website together, basically. Yeah, this video will remain in YouTube after this session, of course. Um, so, like I say, that I've put certain keywords. That's honestly, that really is all. Um, no, Michael, I read um, JS Scan. So, what that does is that takes a list of i mean i haven't mentioned it in this uh, for automating because i've got a new one coming out very soon but basically what that does is it will take a list of javascript files and you can modify the regex inside to look for certain keywords um so if you're on burp and you extract all of the urls and extract javascript files then you can simply mass scan them um, but it's a bit buggy and I c i've made it a lot better <laughs> um in hacking experience and skills with time will make you a, a better learner. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, like I said, I feel like I've honestly rushed that. Um, so please, feel free to ask me absolutely anything you want. Um, like I said, I spend hours dorking. Um, I don't know, it's fun, interesting. You learn what a company's trial is. Like, you like your docs in the company. Um, you're finding as much as you possibly can about them. <laughs> Um, how to be creative? I mean, I, I, <laughs> that's just just using your brain, I guess, isn't it? Um, do you know what I mean? That's just being human. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to ask that, answer that one, if I'm honest, because I don't know. Um, how can we be good in RCE? Um, 
again, I'm not quite sure how to answer that because <sighs> there's no being good and bad at anything as a hacker because as a hacker, I feel like you're just naturally interested in how something works and you want to poke at it and depending on the functionality and the feature, that's where you go down the rabbit hole and learn what's going on. You see what's been posted online. If you don't understand it, ask questions, research. Um, getting good at RCE is just... It just comes over time, I guess. Practice on things like Pentester Lab um, to get, if you, I mean, if you want to know what it feels like to find one and things like that. Um, I keep finding cross-domain files. Um, so cross-domain, yeah. So if they are whitelisting um, every single, let's get this up quickly. Um, so what is it? If they're like whitelisting every single, so again, this is a this is probably the top tip for everyone right here. If you don't know what something does, if you just simply Google for it, yeah, and put hacker one after, chances are someone else has found something similar, and you'll learn a lot. So we're gonna do this right now for um, Neo. So you're asking what? I mean, what? Come on, Chrome, hurry up! <laughs> All right, the questions are flooding in. Wow. So. If you see this, and again, when you're hacking, treat things like they're English because, again, code works based on what we as humans tell it to do. So Smeagol's reported this five years ago. Um, allow access from domain. Now, again, that's pretty straightforward. Allow access from domain, which basically tells um, if you request this domain from Flash, it's saying allow request from any domain because it's got a wildcard there. Um, so yeah, it basically allows you to read information from it. So yeah, there's your question answered. So any tips for a server side request forgery? Yeah, um, read up on it again. So my opinion, if you Google for SSRF sec list, and if you simply look at the, um, payloads that people have shared for certain bugs, if you can get your head around what that payload is doing, then you can get your head around what certain features and things that you should um, look for, basically. No, no, it's payloads, actually. I'm on the wrong one. So, let's go on... Uh, where is it? Server-side request forgery... Whoa. Server-side request forgery sec lists. So we'll go through a few of you, few of them for you, if you don't understand it. Ah, it's payload all the things, not sec lists. My bad. Um, server side request forgery. So again, look, there's lots of information as to bypasses. Um, so here's a great tip. When you are subdomain scanning, and let's say, for example, you find developer.example.com. Chances are this developer portal will be hosted on some sort of cloud service, usually AWS or something like that. And if it's some sort of developer portal, chances are it will have a feature like a console or webhook, tester, things like that. Because it's a developer portal, they need to be able to test things. Well, put two and two together and think, well, it's hosted on AWS. There's features which allow me to input URLs and it returns a response. See what happens, basically. Uh, that's my tip for SSRF. Look as to what lots of other people are doing and the trend is your friend. <laughs> um, okay, wow, lots of questions coming in. Um, in XSS, when to use Unicode versus HTML entities? Um, Okay, that's extremely simple as well. So, I believe I did do... Come on, computer. Don't do this to me. I believe uh, I would go check out my stream, Bypassing Filters. But basically, if you're seeing this, then it's not going to be vulnerable. Um, but, do you know what I mean? There are potential ways around that. Because if you're trying that, and it comes up as um, that. Um, but if you try that and it actually does reflect it as that, then you could bypass it by doing that, couldn't you? Um, do you know what I mean? But again, that's case by case scenario. <laughs> Any tips for finding XSE? Um, I believe I'd answer that again by looking at the payloads. So 
you can also ta change so if you ever see content type um, application slash JSON simply change that to XML content type um, and see what it replies with because sometimes when there's a JSON parser there'll be an XML parser as well um, and you know I mean sometimes that can lead to XSE um, again so XSE hacker one content type application JSON so if you google that let's see what we comes up with um, yeah so here we go cool there's a p few potentially ha I mean, Hacker One with their disclosed reports, it's it's a massive library of information. Um, any single bug type you want to see at a proof of concept, it's there. Um, that's what I always do if I'm ever stuck and confused. You see what have other people found, and that's I mean, that's why sharing is great. Um, I don't know if this one is actually like the example I wanted, but yeah. Um. I am new, quite noob. Can you help me with recon? Um, I highly recommend you follow Ben Namsek. Um, he has released Lazy Recon, and he's also currently doing lots of streams um, with live recon on Yahoo. Highly recommend you follow him and check him out. He's, I mean, real down to earth guy, really approachable. He'll help you out. Highly recommend you check that out. Um, is it possible to convert open URL um, to SSRF? Yes, it is. Um, again, let's Google SSRF open redirect hacker one. Let's have a look. Maybe there is. Maybe there's not. But so imagine, imagine the scenario where you have example.com query and it's got URL and you can input any URL you want here and it will respond with what is there, right? So it responds with what's there. Okay, so it sends a request and responds with the HTML, okay? So let's say, for example, you wanted to read localhost, so 127, and it said, error, nope, not allowed, right? Um, so it has some sort of blacklist. But imagine if you found a redirect, which imagined you could do this, and you put 127.127. So then imagine if you put this up here, it might follow this redirect, bypass their little blacklist, and well, when it redirects, it ends up on here, and it's like, hello, you're on localhost. And there you go. <laughs> That's kind of the... The rundown as to it. So yeah, but well, I got a lot of questions coming through. Wow. Uh, what is the easiest vulnerability to find for beginners? Um, I don't recommend you have that mindset when it comes to hacking, and um, especially when you're learning, um, because it get your head around what hacking actually is. Do you know what I mean? When you're signing up to a website or you're logging in. Um, you're sending a friend request. Just get your head around how this website is working. What is I mean, what what request is it sending? And then think to yourself, okay, so I can if I send a friend request, it's got a parameter ID in there. What happens if I put a single apostrophe after that? Do I get any type of SQL injection? Because if you read up on SQL injection, it will tell you that that's a common payload and things to try. Um, so that's my opinion, and that's one reason I started Bug Bounty Notes, so people could read about certain bug types and then go and practice to get their head around, rather than going at a website not knowing anything and trying random stuff everywhere, because that's how you get burnt out. Um, how do I select a program? Um, so I go for companies that, in my opinion, are well known, um, because, well, in my opinion, the bigger the company, the more teams they're going to have, the more mistakes they're going to make. Um, bigger the company, they might have stocks and shares, which means people will be breathing down their neck to push code. They might make simple mistakes and not think of certain things. Um, they might bypass certain identification process because they've released a feature to make money because, like I say, companies have investors breathing down their neck. Lots of lots of things. Um I like a wide scope and locks to play with. Um, yeah. Can you de obfuscate and modified JavaScript files packed by Webpack? Um, I believe so. Let's have a look. 
I'm on my wrong computer. Um, webpack unpack. Potentially, I mean, these people are seeing seem to see it's possible. Seems relatively simple. Um, I believe so. There, there's your answer. <laughs> Um, it's been two months, so I'm trying into bug bounties, but got nothing. I feel like giving up. Um, but when I see you, I feel motivated. Oh, well, I really appreciate that. Um, so, when you say you've got nothing, what do you mean by you've got nothing? Because when you're hacking, um, you should always be writing notes as to interesting behavior that you found and certain things that are happening. Um, because when you're hacking, it's all about always trying to create that lead. And you know I mean, going with a mindset as to, okay, people have always mentioned, I mean, um, what's that? I can't remember his name. Uh, Ron, Ron Chan, that's his name. He posted that he read my post about redirecting after login. I mean, I always, always talk about this. Um, like I say, the trend is your friend. Everyone does it and it leads to impact. So when you're hacking, don't go in with the mindset of just, spraying and praying and hoping you'll find something going with the mindset as to okay i want to understand how this website has put this certain feature together like i say if they've got a developer uh, portal where is it hosted what features are there are there any webhook events things like that um encoding and decoding by developers and javascript files can be bypassed yeah uh, do you know i mean javascript is client side yeah so your web browser has to understand and process this so you can typically get it to human readable format depending on how heavily encoded as such it is but you know I mean you're typically going to get that back to readable format in my opinion um wow these questions <laughs> okay so what about your opinion when uh, service side request bypass using 301 302 303 why that happen um so could be dependent on the library they're using or how they're coding it. I believe PHP. Um, somebody didn't somebody have a there was a challenge I believe on bug bounty notes where and the solution showed that PHP basically ignored the redirect. Um, so yeah, that's just I guess depending on what is coded and things like that. Um, when you want to learn a new bug, do you deploy on your own local server and deb debug reverse? Sometimes. Um, depend on what it is I really need to play with HTTP smuggling I just haven't had the proper time to play with it just yet uh, lots of people are finding stuff of it um, I need to get my head around it a lot more um, I was doing challenges on bug bounty notes bypassing filters since I know there was a way to bypass it as it was a challenge I try my best to bypass it but in real case how do I get that kind of motivation um, so well the motivation is you as a hacker is you want to be able to break it isn't it that's i guess that's just something personal as to how motivated things you get to it i mean yeah <laughs> that's just that's, i don't know really uh what nmap scan would you usually give to endpoints um i don't really run many nmap scans if i'm honest i mean do you know what i mean i don't typically look where everyone else is looking um uh, it's easy a anyone can run an nmap scan and shodan has looked at everything and do you know what I mean? Um, I'm probably not the best person to ask for nmap scans, if I'm honest. Um, I would poke Nafi or someone for that. He knows a lot more and does a lot more of it. How to test file upload bugs. Is there any link that covers file upload bugs? So, yeah, great, great question. So, with file uploads... Um, okay, so, that, that could be a lengthy answer. Well, I feel like I want to make it a lengthy answer. I could make an entire talk. <laughs> um, yeah, let me get back to you on that one. Let me make an entire tutorial on that. That's something I actually need to do. Uh, let me get back to you on that because literally I feel like I could do so much on that. Um, and I don't want to miss everyone else's question here. <laughs> um, yeah. So how to identify a website vulnerable to local file inclusion if it doesn't have parameter like Node.js without reading the source code. Um, that's kind of looking as to how the website is put together. Um, do you know what I mean? If, if a file name, a uh, parameter name is file equals and it's trying to import some sort of file and things like that, that's where you can kind of do you know I mean, create your lead as to, okay, well, what's going on here? Um, if they are wanting to include some sort of file or something that's what I mean 
you're looking for that. Um, how to find SQL injection nowadays? It's the same. Um, I typically use a lot of sleep commands now because a lot of SQL injection these days is blind because you know I mean nobody's printing all the errors out crazily. Um, so if you use some sort of a lot of sleep payloads, you'll have a lot more hits in my opinion because well they'll bypass WAF sometimes and it's an easy way to determine a blind SQL injection if the page sleeps for a long time. Obviously, don't kill things. <laughs> Uh, any good course where we can learn all the basics of hacking? Yeah, Google, in my opinion. Um, and like I say, any, anything you can Google anything with Hacker One after it. Open redirect token leak Hacker One, for example. And again, this is getting creative with what we're talking um, Hacker One basically. And look at this: stealing users OAuth token via redirect URI. So if you didn't understand this bug type, um, and maybe you don't understand people's blog posts, or I don't know, you found something interesting, the community is a great thing. Um, we're all a great bunch of people and things. I mean, everyone's sharing. It's great. <laughs> so yeah, here we go. He's got... So look, again... When you somebody asked me about custom word lists, can you see how many common things API, auth, response type, redirect? Just you're looking for the trend is your friend, callback, things like that. Um, and like I say, this guy managed to steal someone's OAuth token validation bypass. So you look, you get a test.com here. And basically, what this did is when the user visited this page. It would redirect to the OAuth flow and it would end up leaking the token to this guy's website. Um, yeah. Uh, let's carry on. Where are we at? Wow. Um, can my site be used for mobile? Yeah, it is mobile friendly. Um, I Yeah, I've got a lot of updates and things coming to it. Um, let's just get around to it. Can you give us some tips on how to bypass WAFs? Um, I would go look at my earlier stream as to bypass and filters. But do you know what I mean? Think about what a WAF is. I mean, what is a WAF? Web application firewall. It's pretty much just looking for hard-coded keywords. If script is valid, block. So bypassing WAFs is where you just have to get creative and understand what is it actually looking for. Is it not going to look for that and again I always tell people this and uh, find it all the time with bypassing things that sometimes they're only looking for complete tags you know what I mean they're looking for iframe if you never end the tag sometimes it can bypass it um, so WAF is uh, so I'd go check out my bypassing filters because I do go into that a lot more detail um, WAFs are friends fun to hack <laughs> um, I'm having a really hard time in XSS um, what hard time are you having? What have you got a bug that you need help with? Hit me up. Um, Weston, what are your most favourite bugs to find? Um, any. Uh, I just love hacking. Do you know what I mean? I love being able to say to this company, hey, I've got all your user data potentially. Um, a hacker can do this. A hacker can do that. I, do you know what I mean? I just love the thrill of it. You, it's, it's, it's almost 2020 and you, you don't go to prison for legally hacking websites. It's brilliant. That's... I don't know. I don't have a favourite, if I'm honest. Um, Idol may be probably up there. Um, you use sleep payloads after testing with apostrophe or the first thing you do? No, so I... Do I mean, back in the day, it was apostrophes everywhere. Um, I'm not saying don't test for it, but I typically, honestly, do just go to the sleep payloads these days. Um, I have a lot more success. Uh, you got a lot of wafts and things blocking SQL injections these days. Um, yeah. Do you hack by a strict concept, e.g., list subdomain, screenshot them, collect JavaScript files? Um, yeah. So every single thing I do is in here. Um, your question will be answered one day in detail. <laughs> um, if a website contains image page, gives 200 OK response when I send it with file name parameter, it responds with 403. Can we bypass that to LFI? Okay. Um, interesting question. Um, so do you know what it's potentially coded in like what sort of language or things like that 
Um, and also, if you was to do one one two three dot text, so txt or XML, um, what does it do then? Um, yeah. Why today is new like a robot bug report? Um, you'll have to ask him that. <laughs> He's very good. Um, dork for finding CSP bypassing JSON P callbacks or any way to find them. Um, so for JSON P callbacks and things like that, any single time you see it responding back with application JSON, um, I simply just test on every single one of those endpoints. Um, but you're simply dorking for I mean the keyword callback JSON P. Um, what is there? there's another one, isn't it? jQuery something like that underscore and a ton of random gobbledy gooch. What is it? Let's do let's do it now, right now. Let's just put in URL callback. I don't know, let's see what happens. That's probably not gonna give me a lot, no. Um all right, let's put I don't know. Let's put in URL JSON as well. Here we go. There we go. See I like I say I'm just, just literally talking <laughs> random stuff when you manage to find stuff. <laughs> I mean, what? Uh, yeah. yeah. There's one on Twitter right here. So there it was, jQuery, and then a bunch of numbers. Sorry, that page does not exist. Uh, I'm getting distracted. I'll carry on. Um, can you give an example for what SQL injection sleep command? Again. There's no point reinventing the wheel. Um... Lots of people have posted. Where is it? There it is. SQL injection. There's lots of talented, talented people out there who share methods and things like that. So you come to payload all things. Control F. Search for the word blind. I don't know what that goes to actually. Nothing apparently. Awkward. Um, but. I'm not on. I mean, I'm streaming on my laptop right now. Um, I have my computer here. If you really want me to, I can send you my SQL um, payload list if you really want me to. Um, it has all my sleep things, but it's pretty much just from payloads, all things, and gathered around from the internet because, like I say, everyone shares information and the trend is your friend. <laughs> um, who is your favorite bug hunter? Um, um, I don't know from the top of my head. I have lots of people who I think are very talented in that. Uh, I don't want to just single one person out. <laughs> so, I don't know on that one. Um, just joined the stream. Looked like you held up a book a moment ago. What was it? Um, yes, yeah, so this is my methodology book that I give people on a training event. Um, if I load it up on Bug Bite Notes, I believe I have it on there. Um Okay, it didn't work. There we go. Um This is turned to a QA stream or readjust. So Western we pretty much I pretty much blitz Dorking and that after and now it's turned into a QA stream. Um which I think are really beneficial for people because I don't know, it's good. But yeah, this was the event that I held for people where I basically taught them step by step my entire methodology and yeah how I target things really <laughs> um, I did mention earlier I'm going to get around to releasing it and things like yeah it's gonna be coming out just yeah bear with me please <laughs> where should I start learning hacking um, Google in my opinion um, yeah where you find ID parameter, for example, you start with apostrophe. If it doesn't return errors, you start testing for blind SQL injection. So, okay, so fear as. So, think about where an SQL injection might exist. So, again, let's go on Hacker1, SQL injection, Hacker1. Let's have a look. The trend is your friend. So, there's been one recently, 2019, on labs data gov. So, think about what SQL injection is. An SQL injection is where the server um, code is making a request to the database to query from some information and show you the information back. 
So if you see a number, chances are it's going to make a request to the database. So test for SQL injection there and things like that. Um, okay, this bug is actually in the user agent and there's actually a great sleep command. Um, I guess, I mean, you can test everything, I guess, for SQL injection if you really wanted to. But for people who are new to hacking and that, I don't recommend just spraying and praying, spraying and praying on everything. Um, but look for numbers, test for idols, SQL injection, and things like that. Um, think about, do you know what I mean, if you see, let's say for example, you visit example.com and it makes a request to forward slash example.com forward slash log and it sends a bunch of your browser information, what user agent you have, um, dimensions of your screen, what are they probably going to be doing with that data? They're going to insert it into a database. So potentially you can get SQL injection via that, um, which in my opinion, I believe this is the case here. I mean, I don't know what else they were doing with a user agent, but they were doing something. <laughs> um, there's a time frame for that book. Um, yeah, I, I'm getting around to it. I've I got a lot on. <laughs> I'll wake up in the morning. Can we make success in bug bounty, sir? Um, I'm not quite sure I understand the question, um, but you are successful as much as you put the time in, in my opinion. If you wanted to be a successful footballer, then you would put the time in to learn about football and getting fit. And same with hacking. It's, do you know what I mean? If you hack for money, then in my opinion, you're gonna fail. Uh, if you've seen somebody earning 15,000 and you're like, oh my God, I wanna get involved in that. I wanna earn money, I wanna do this, then my opinion, people can, I don't know, people, everyone's got their own opinions, but my opinion is you're kind of going to be destined to fail because you're just chasing the money. Um, that's, it's not going to work out. You have to have an interest in hacking. You have to have an interest in to learn as to how things work. And yeah, the money's just the bonus. The Like I say, we are very privileged in almost 2020 to be able to be legally hacking governments and telling them and not going to prison. I mean, look at this. The TTS bug bounty rewarded him with $2,000 for an SQL injection. Um, Tommy G mentioned that he'd been to prison for hacking. Um, and here we are, two years later. Well, this was two years ago, sorry. Um, he's been paid lots of money. So, yeah. <laughs> I thought like that answers that question. Um, what about those who paid for the event? You are releasing their book. Um, what do you mean by that? Um, the people who turned up to my event got access to all of the training material, um, a hard copy of my book. Um, yeah, they got access to everything that they said that I was going to give them access to. Um, should we notify companies before running an SQL map? Um, check their policy. Do you know what I mean? That's what a bug bounty policy is is therefore it tells you the rules if they want you to set a certain header um or if they want you to set certain time limits on scans or if they don't want you to do certain things when testing for rce it's gonna be in their policy um if it's not in their policy then you just have to put on your responsible hat don't you and think to yourself well I don't want to crash this site um, and if you don't truly understand what SQL injection is doing and you're trying it absolutely everywhere then you might piss that company off um, do you know what I mean that's this you have to be professional in this job companies are trusting us from the comfort of our own our own home to hack them legally and responsibly tell them so you really have to put your good hat on and understand what we have you know what I mean with great responsibility comes with great power or is the other way around? With great power comes great responsibility. That's the one. <laughs> um, Burp Pro extension suggestions. Um, so Param Miner, Burp Collaborator. Um, yeah, I feel like the usual um, that people recommend. If I'm honest, they're the only two that I use. <laughs> so they're the only two I'm going to recommend. But I believe there's probably a list out there of everyone what things that people use i do a lot a lot of manual hacking um yeah um i have another question how do you create a local file inclusion payloads without knowing the website structure so that's a good question and something i sometimes struggle with if i'm honest um 
and same with RCE, do you know what I mean? Sometimes you don't know how things are working. That will be a simple case of I just, again, Google for it, if I'm honest. Google really is your best friend and has answered to absolutely everything. So if I believe there is an local file inclusion, then I will get some examples up of blog posts and see what other people have found. See if there's any similarities, parameters, error codes, things like that. Um, Behavior is the same. And yeah, try and potentially get something to work. Because like I say, the trend is your friend and a lot of things out there are put together the same, work the same, the process and the flow. Um, yeah. Hopefully that answered your question. Um, I mean, I had understood you weren't releasing the book as it was for those who had paid for your event. Um, yeah, you are correct. This will not be the book that I'm releasing. Um, this book went with my training event that I put on for people. Um, yeah, I'm working on some stuff on Bug Bay Notes, which goes with some more material. Um, like, not... Yeah, it's... Yeah, it's... Just chill. <laughs> just chill. Um, have I ever tried Black Cat, sir? No. Um, why would you want to end up in jail when you could be end up getting paid a nice amount of money, potentially offered a job by this company, and yeah, you're helping save save the internet, as they say, even though developers need to help us as well by not making so many mistakes. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Um, do you want to keep the stream a Q&A or we go back to JavaScript? Um, so if I'm honest, I went through everything that I really wanted to go through. If anyone has any questions as to what I spoke about with that, um, let me know. But if I'm honest, I, do you know what I mean? I feel like with JavaScript files, you're literally... It's a case-by-case -case scenario. So like, I give some examples already before, like on TripAdvisor, each endpoint and functionality they have, they have a JavaScript file to go with that functionality. So you look at the JavaScript file and you see what's happening and you work it out piece by piece. Look for certain keywords, beautify it to make it look okay and readable and things like that. Um, and yeah, you're simply looking at what in front of, is what in front of you, basically. A lot of hacking is you just have to just go get stuck in, if I'm honest. There's, I mean, just, just go do it. <laughs> um, can't you use MMAP to get the website OS and use payloads to depend on the OS? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, I mean, these days, some sort of um, WAF firewall type thing will probably block something. Um, isn't that mostly out of scope? Um, what... I don't know what that is in reference to. A website is forbidden after their search results. Ping gives healthy if ping also forbidden. How to check for further directories. Um, well, think about what that is doing. I mean, you're visiting forward slash ping and it just replies back with healthy. Chances are it probably does not a lot else. You know what I mean? It's just some type of ping file which returns with the server health I don't know um, in my opinion that probably wouldn't do much else I don't believe but do you think changing a password token of only lowercase letters and number of max 15 letters brute forcible uh, lowercase letters and numbers so is it always the same amount of lowercase letters and numbers or is it sometimes three numbers sometimes five numbers sometimes just two numbers sometimes no numbers that's yeah um which program language should we learn for hacking and bug bounty <sighs> there's no right answer to that um you don't need to be a developer to learn how to hack in my opinion um basic html and javascript would be a great start because that's how most websites are put together client side stuff and the stuff that's right in front of you really um I'm new to bug bounty hunting. Should I focus on G Shop Web CTF or Bug Bounty Nodes? Why not all three? <laughs> you can't go wrong, then can you? Um, yeah, I can share the slides. Um, or should I focus on Hacker One bugs? Well, Bug Bounty Notes is about training and learning how to basically learn how to hack. So you read the blog posts, read the disclosed things, and then basically go practice it. Because I felt like a lot of people were getting burnt out because they were learning what XSS was, but they weren't able to find it. And I wanted to make them 
feel like, yeah, they found it. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, anyone got any questions about the JavaScript stuff and Dorkin? Because that's what it, this stream was about. I feel like we've really got off topic with some questions, which, in my opinion, no offense, but can be Googled and the answer's there. Um, but, I mean, I get a lot of people ask me, how do you dork? Why do you read JavaScript files? What do you find? This is, I can't put it any more simpler than this. Do you know what I mean? I'm giving you keywords that I use, um, why I'm doing it. Um, I give you the example on Google. Uh, I've give you examples of keywords that I look for. I mean, it's all about going down the rabbit hole, isn't it? You know what I mean? You find stage and servers and things like that. This is literally what I do. I mean, it's... Uh, no secret sauce. This is it. You, you can be a hacker like me. <laughs> and like I say, why do I look in JavaScript files? Because that's how websites are put together. Um, do you know what I mean? Think about it. You visit a website. JavaScript files helps it work and does certain things, sends certain requests, tracks your clicks, things like that. Um, so if you're new to hacking, this is really as simple as it gets. Um, you're literally looking for keywords, looking for how things are put together because, do you know what I mean? Code works based on what we tell it to do as humans. So, and most codes written in English, keywords give it away. <laughs> um, question about JavaScript files. I'm kind of a new, but I wanted to know how you see what function applies to what element in the HTML. So that's just again. So let's say, for example, you see register. Um, I mean, the function register will go with the elements to do with registering in the HTML. Um, most JavaScript functions and API calls, AJS requests, go with what the div ID is, input names, and things like that. Um, so, yeah, Michael, um, yes, I guess I probably, I kind of assume people would look already in the script tags but yeah that's the same as javascript you know what i mean they're either going to put it on the page directly or in javascript files the the purpose is the same uh, one thing i will say about that though is let's say for example it is in script tags um rather than just in javascript files you more like to find like um, parameters and things like that um that's from past experience in my opinion um so yeah, just carrying on. So like I say, when you're looking at these JavaScript files, I've put what I am looking for right there. Dev comments, new endpoints, subdomains, certain requests if I need to upgrade. Um, and yeah. Any way to find broken auth using these JavaScript files? Um, yeah. Uh, there's my top example in my opinion. Um, do you know what I mean? Think about a bug, but if, if I'm hacking right now, yeah, let's say I want to go hacking after this right now. Let's say I go through Hacker One's directory, I go through Bug Crowd's directory, Synac, etc., etc. Think about a company which lets you pay for a certain feature. And then I'm going to think in my head, I wonder if many hackers have actually paid for this. It costs, let's say, $50 a month. Um, then I start, so then the, the before, I've thought about what I want to go hack. And you can find, let's say, 10 plus targets, which probably have this functionality. And then you go through the method checklist, which is, okay, well, can I use test credit card details to get it for free? Um, things like that. Um, upgrade to just level one. Try and find information about what the top upgrade gives you. Um, do you know what I mean? Can you create certain th um, lists and things like this is this referenced anywhere and then try make those requests as just account level one does it work have you got like some sort of privilege escalation and things like that um, yeah that's literally looking at literally what what is right in front of you setting a goal setting a target and going for it I mean let's think of a company right now can anyone think of the top of their head of a company that might offer different packages of a certain service that we could potentially try hack. I'm sure there is something out there. <laughs> Even if you don't have to pay and you, I mean, it's built in as a function, you've got an admin and a moderator and a user and a guest. Can the guest do, f let's say for example, you did have that right. You had an admin, moderator, user and guest. And to be able to vote on a poll, you had to be logged in. So it checked if you as a user. But let's say, for example, you could do it as a guest, then and it works. 
Okay, the impact is relatively low because a guest voting on this poll, it isn't unintended and they might want to know about it, but it gives you that extra insight as to, well, okay, if they forgot about the permissions on this, where else have they also forgot about permission checks? And that's then when you then go straight for the deep stuff and, yeah, that leads to the critical bugs. <laughs> So someone mentioned um, Pornhub. Yeah, I probably won't load that up in the stream though. <laughs> but I maybe yeah, Pornhub lets you pay. I bet. I wonder how many people have bought membership on that. <laughs> Again, membership account, non-membership account. Find all of the requests that a paid member can do, and then just simply try it on an account that hasn't paid and see if it works. You might find something. You never know. Do you do recon and what do you think about it? Yeah, I do do recon. Um, and yeah, I do a hell of a lot of manual. Like This is why I stick to the same program because you really understand what's going on and things like that. Um, but with recon, um, I'm just, if I'm honest, I'm looking for more areas of their website where I can play with. I can log in, sign up, uh, there's things to play with. Um, I do spend time scanning for files and directories and things like that. Um, but everyone is doing that people have got that automated down to a t and they're asleep and it, their script finds things automatically and makes the reports to them fair play to them do you know what i mean um i like challenging myself getting deep into the puzzle and working things out and reverse engineering developers thoughts and yeah really getting down to nitty gritty stuff that's just how i hack in my opinion um, and so, Gerard, yeah, you need to buy membership. I always buy membership on every single program I target because, again, well, people who think like that with, okay, I need to buy a membership, but I'm not actually going to, um, look for free trials, see if they offer you membership for free, potentially. Um, look for ways around it, but, yeah, usually it's not a lot, $15. If it's obviously hundreds, then, yeah, I'm not going to pay for it, in my opinion, unless I'm confident, but... Not a lot of things that I've paid for have been that much, if I'm honest. The max has probably been like $45. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, look for foreign versions of web app. Um, 100% Michael. Um, that goes to what? how do I pick a program? So consider this, right? When If you've got the bigger the program and the more there is to play with and the different teams think about the different headquarters they're going to have as well and they're going to be based in different areas of the world different code base um and then yeah and then think about different user agents ipad android ios mobile versions then think about the apps different languages different language uh, different countries have different laws um um, think about payment features when you change your country. Um, countries have different banks and payment services. Um, some places offer like WeChat to pay and logging in, all this stuff. Think about that. Don't just go from your home country. Um, yeah. <laughs> Do I think the Department of Defense is a good program to get experience? Um, yes, I do. Um, I'm actually, I'll read something out here then from my book. We're about VDPs because I do spend time on VDPs, believe it or not. Um, okay, so I put here um, should you spend time in a vulnerability? I feel like I'm reading the little book out here. This is <laughs> should you spend time in a vulnerability disclosure program? In my opinion, yes. I spend time in VDPs to practice and sharpen my skills because to me, the end goal is about building relationships and becoming a better hacker and helping secure the internet. VDPs are a great way to practice new research. Just know your limits and don't burn out giving companies a complete free test. So, do you know what I mean? Think about that from a professional point of view. If you're going to go spend six months hacking on the same company and you're reporting 10 bugs a day in the hope that they're going to pay you one day, you might burn yourself out. You might get lucky, but you might burn yourself out. Whereas if you've heard about do you know I mean HTTP smuggling and you're like well I really want to test and try this out a wide scope VDP with lots to play with do you know what I mean you're helping them and you're helping yourself um, and do you know what I mean 
sometimes you can build really good relationships with these VDPs and if they had a VDP running for a certain amount of time and they're really impressed with you then they might invite you to their private program or they might even offer you a job or you never know um, there was recently some guy uh, bitwise who he reported a really interesting bug and they paid him via hacker one but then they reached out to him privately to pay him even more um, again do you know what I mean how do we know that six months ago that didn't start off as a VDP and he's just impressed these people enough and they've got things in order and do you know what I mean? Now they want to pay him. Um, it's just about knowing your limits. Don't burn out and do you know what I mean? Don't give a company a complete free test. Know your limits and respect your time yourself. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's carry on. Where did I get to? Uh... We can ask you, Sean, if we could become stuck. Second best friend. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, my DMs are crazy sometimes with how many people are messaging me. But, yeah, feel free to reach out. I try and help as much as possible. I honestly feel like I've gone completely off topic with reading JavaScript files. But at the same time, I feel like I've given people a shit ton of key information right here. Um, how many people use this, I don't know. Um, a lot of people just want to get rich quick and they think hacking is easy and they think that you can just run a tool and that's it, you're rich. Um, it, yeah. <laughs> uh, yo, Ben is in here. Yeah. I recommended Ben earlier uh, for people about recon. Do you know what I mean? Ben streams all the time. He's released Lazy Recon. You want to learn things about recon, just you literally need to get into his streams, follow him, check him out. Um, an amazing hacker that you can poke his brain just as much as me. 100% check him out. Um, do I have a schedule or I just hunt when I feel like it? Um, if I'm honest, I just hunt when I feel like it. Being completely honest. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's, I, yeah, no more, no more to that. If I'm on a streak and a real good roll, like I found a lot of bugs yesterday, um, then I'm just naturally hyped up and pumped up to just want to keep going. Um, when I feel like I've been through quite a lot, I need to give them time to catch up and patch things or release some new stuff. Um, then I might go over to a different program that I poke out or, I don't know, take a break. It's just, Don't force yourself to do something you don't want to do. Do you know what I mean? Um, come, I don't know. Um, any, any time read target come in? Uh, I don't understand that. I think uh, there's Neo. Um, so yeah, is everyone pretty much done with questions? I mean, I will release these slides. Um, I do apologize for it being relatively uh, short about going through things, but really, I feel like I covered everything. I mean, I even give examples. Um, that's that's all it is to it. You're seeing what is in front of you and understanding it. Um, and how badly you want to understand it depends on how badly you want to be a hacker. Do you know what I mean? Um, I don't just skim read through things. I really, really try to get my head around it and understand what's going on. Um, each of their own, I guess. Um, life hacking. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to host a life hacking event at the end of the month for you guys to come hack against some custom-made stuff that I've made. Um it's illegal i guess to hack on an actual bug bounty program live um do i mean ben's just doing recon and things like that but he's not as far as i'm aware doing actual hacking uh, because imagine if we did stumble upon something um one i'm gonna be well i well, have somebody reported before me um while i'm finding it or somebody uses it for malicious purposes and things like that then technically i've helped you do that and i believe i've getting a lot of trouble for that and i don't want to do that <laughs> Um, do you go one bug at a time or how do you start off with what bug you want to find? Um, great question. Um, I I look at the features that are in front of me and I guess because I have a developer background, I can understand what is going to be there. So like I say, imagine a developer portal. Um, I mean, go to developer.paypal.com and what are you going to see on there? Webhook events. Uh, you can test things like that. 
then you go check it on another company you'll see the exact same and you check it on loads of bug bounty programs and you'll soon realize oh, okay a lot of these developer portals have all got webhook testers and things like that if you then google for that bug type on hacker one you see that lots of people have found ssrf via that you'll also see lots of people have found that it's hosted on aws or some sort of cloud service so that's how you can extract the aws keys for higher impact and then that's how you know what to test for on this certain subdomain you found. You're no longer just being like, okay, cool, this is developer.whatever.com, what should I do? You could, you've already got a massive insight into what to try potentially based on what everyone else has been finding and sharing. And like I say, the trend is your friend. So on logins, you're looking for redirect parameters, leaking the token, um, looking for potential signing up with the company's email. Does it give you access to any more features? You, you, things like that. Um, so I go at feature by feature rather than bug by bug. I use a website exactly how it was designed to be used. Do you know what I mean? If you visit whatever.com, how does it work? What is available to me? And what does it do? And that's it. <laughs> that's, that sounds relatively simple. Um, obviously there's a lot, a lot to it, but that's, that's how you hack. Do you know what I mean? Think about it logically. You visit major website yahoo.com they've got mail and all this and that that's code that's been pushed out in production to do a certain thing you're simply poking at what is in front of you um, and then you're asking search engine what do they know about it spend months doing that and you'll find bugs trust me <laughs> yeah you can find p1 like i said i got paid a p1 two weeks ago from simply going on to github and dorkin i found an internal swagger ui exposed it leaked some data yeah they paid me critical um, off top maybe in the maybe in the past few months I completely burn out how would you suggest to regain back the motivation great question because I actually burnt out recently as well um, so for me when I burnt out I kind of just took a step back and kind of tried to look as to why did I burn out um, and I felt like to me it was well a lot of things but mainly I was just hopping around too much um, and that's I feel like you can overhack. Do you know what I mean? People come, people work it's the same nine to five job sometimes, and they come home from work and absolutely hate it and don't want to do it. The same concept can, even if you enjoy hacking, the same concept can um, get you with hacking if you're doing it all the time, constantly, and especially if you've always got that money mindset as to, oh my god, I want to earn money, I've got to find something, um, etc., etc. Um, to take a step back and think to yourself, okay, why did I burn out? Is it because one, I'm not finding anything? Um, so then that's where you then branch off and then ask yourself, has this target learned from running a bug bounty program and started securing things? Um, do I need to up my game and start trying some new things like HTTP smuggling and some new vulnerability types? Um, what is, are lots of new hackers on here and they're finding it before me and things like that? Um, if you are, if you're feeling burnt out, even though you are feeling things, um, I'm not. Well, I don't believe. Well, I mean, well, yeah. If you can want to go into more details about why you feel completely burnt out, um, but for regaining the motivation, um, I guess it's dependent on each person because everyone is different. But for me, what gained my motivation was I just simply picked a brand new target that I knew absolutely nothing about and it forced me to revisit my roots rather than getting in a routine as to, oh my God, I know this company so much and I know what's going on. It forced me to revisit my roots and revisit my old self and learning again and hacking again, basically. And then that led to bugs and yeah, I was motivated again, I guess. Um, yeah, <laughs> hopefully that answered your question. Um, are bug bounty platforms demotivating for beginners because of lots of damn good hackers haven't found nearly all? How about dorking for programs? Um, I feel like you're asking every question from my book. <laughs> about, um, so I don't believe bug bounty program, uh, bug bounty platforms demotivate hackers at all. Um, if anything, they embrace us because you know I mean they do connect us with the companies. The only thing that I believe is demotivating is if you are brand new to hacking and you join HackerOne or you join Bug Crowd, etc. Um, yeah, you can do the CTF on HackerOne to get some private invites, but judging from what I've seen posted publicly, um, don't shoot the messenger, please, anyone. Um, but apparently the invites aren't too great, and yeah, people basically 
I guess people feel like, you know what I mean, it's hard to get invited to all of the best programs as to where all the money is. But that's not the case. Um, because even though, yes, there's lots of private programs on Hacker One, Bug Crowd, and things like that, a lot of these companies also do have public pages with their security information saying, hello, if you have a security issue, please send it here, etc. And again, that's where it goes back to how serious do you actually want to be a hacker and take this seriously? Because if you found something really critical, um, well, it doesn't have to be critical, but if you find something cool and you make a nice report, if this company has a private program on Hacker One that does pay, if you are professional and work with them, chances are they'll invite you to this. You haven't got to brown nose them or do anything, do you know what I mean? You're just doing you. Um, obviously, if they don't have a public page that says that you can hack them, then obviously, do you know what I mean? You have to abide by the law, etc. Um, but really, think about it like this, right? Company, 2019 really has been the year of the hacker. Companies are really interested in us. They love our skill. They love our creativity and talent etc etc if you want to take this serious then don't just sit and wait for the invites to come to you um practice your hacking make noise show you the world that you're a good hacker and companies will come to you um really as simple as it is and that's why sharing is great information uh, great for the community and helps you build yourself up because you know what i mean it's yeah <laughs> Um, so you can dog for programs, do you know what I mean? You're just looking for um, the basic, really. Damn, really getting off um, topic here. Um, and also, always consider that companies are pushing code daily. Like, they're always forever changing. And like I say, they, the bigger the company, the more scope, the more features they've got planned. Um, if they're on the stock market, they have to keep making money to keep investors happy. So they're going to potentially be rushing features. They're not going to consider certain things. Um, there's so much into this. Literally, we essentially work for these companies without actually needing to work for them. Do you know what I mean? Um, I believe that's now, isn't that illegal for Uber in California or something? Um Apparently, it might affect bug bounties. Um, not quite sure on that. Anyone has any f information on that? Yeah. Um, anyone got any questions about what I've talked about? Is everyone pretty happy with everything? Everyone, Anyone learn everything today? You're not going to become the best hacker overnight. I mean, I've been hacking... Pff, I don't know. I've lost count how many years. It's just... I don't know. It's, it's, I don't know, it's normal to me now. It's <laughs> But hopefully people have learned something. Um, hopefully I've cleared up a lot of confusion to people because a lot of people honestly feel, I feel like some of you feel like hacking is, oh my God, next level complicated shit. But you're honestly just using the features that are in front of you. Um, there was a recent, um, somebody posted a recent, video they recently started streaming ah oh, i can't remember their name it she was a it was a girl and she was talking about idols um and finding your first bug her approach to it is literally on point that was it katie um let me post this i don't know why i'm not following her so I highly recommend you give her a follow because she's actually started a new YouTube series where, do you know what I mean, she's approaching it like a new hacker and she's literally using the features and functions that are in front of you, which is exactly what you should be doing. Um, the recon stuff comes with the tools and can be automated and things like that. Um, but literally, it's testing what's in front of you. <laughs> Yeah, I highly recommend you check her stuff out, which is good. Um, what do I use for a password manager? I use my brain. Memory. If I'm honest, that's gone on, God's honest truth. Um, I, I don't know. I have good memory. I don't know. I remember. I Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I feel like I'll wrap this up then. If people have enjoyed this, uh, learn a lot. Um, yeah. Yeah. I do ramble so, so much. I just... I don't, this, is, this is just me as a hacker. Do you know what I mean? I know I say I'm rambling and I'm apologising, but I don't know why I'm apologising. Um, because this is what, I guess, makes me a good hacker. Because this is how my thoughts are when I'm hacking. And I'm inside my head, and I'm trying to get my head around how something is working and what's going on. And it's just 
constant flow, just an end endless force as to what to try and what to do. Um, and if you're sitting there thinking that that's you and that comes naturally to you and you love talking in and you get passionate about things once you get talking, then the hacker life is for you, really, because you should embrace that creativity and let your brain thoughts flow. Don't ignore them. Go to the next level stuff. <laughs> So yeah, appreciate everyone who has tuned in. Um, I hope you've learned something and I hope you find some bugs and you don't overcomplicate it and get confused. And yeah, I hope you have fun really. Um, feel free to always reach out if you get stuck, you're confused, you don't know what's going on. Um, but yeah, I wish every one of you success in bug bounties and finding bugs because there are bugs out there. Trust me. Do not feel demotivated because there are lots of people involved in bug bounties and lots of people doing it. Because you will find bugs if you put the time in. You just have to know what it is that you want. Don't go to, don't go at it with the mindset of, oh my god, I want to earn this much money and this. Think about the trend. Think about what other people have found. Think about certain features and certain things that happen on them. And put the puzzle together. Um, you spend time and yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah thank you everyone for tuning in um, I will see you again soon I'm actually going live again in four days um, where we're going to be building a proof of concept or get the fuck out um, very briefly what I'm going to cover on that is so a lot of people have always messaged me of, oh my god I've got self XSS um, but I can't do anything with it uh, I'm going to give you some little help and some pointers as to what you can potentially do with bugs like self XSS um, and things like that um, and just giving you some tips and insight as to building a really cool proof of concept because very very quickly because um, I did say I was going to go <laughs> and I don't want people to log off thinking I've gone and then I give some really cool information but companies opening bug bounty programs, you should never report a bug assuming they know what you're on about because a lot of these companies who have opened bug bounty programs are learning on the way as well as you. I mean, everyone's always learning. But when you report an XSS and it just does alerts, they're sometimes just going to treat it like that. Um, whereas if you can build like a full-blown account takeover via whatever via this XSS, that's then going to not only impress them and be like, whoa, whoa, this guy did something crazy. Um, you're also going to feel great about yourself because you've learned potentially something new. You've maybe learned how to develop more because you've made a proof of concept and you've learned a bit of JavaScript and things like that. Um, you might find some unintentional other behavior when building your proof of concept um, and testing it and things like that. Um, so yeah, always consider that. Um, yeah. Anyway, guys, appreciate everyone tuning in, and I will see you guys next time. How do we reach out to you? Um, you can always reach me at zshorno at bugbindnotes.com, um, or tweet me, DM me. Yeah, I'm always available. Um, so, yeah, guys, appreciate everyone tuning in. Take care, and I'll see you again soon. Peace out, homies. <laughs>